Okay, a box arrived from eBay this week. Let's see what's inside of it. And what we have here is a Heathkit Hero Jr. robot. I actually owned one of these back in the 80s. Uh, not this exact one, of course, but one very much like it. My father and I had gone to the Heathkit store. We bought the robot. Um, I still remember us buying it, taking it home, uh, me playing with it. I had got the basic cartridge for it. I would got the remote for it. I bought it all assembled. I was only a teenager at the time. Uh, but then I ended up selling my robot maybe late 90s, early 2000s, uh, just because I wasn't really doing anything with it. I've always kind of missed that robot because uh, this, those Heathkit robots were pretty cool. Uh, Heathkit made two or three different robots. This was the Hero Junior. A little bit more of a toy, but also a programming uh, robot. They also had the Hero One, which is sort of the iconic one with the arm that comes out of the side and a breadboard on top. You can take the head off and look in it. Um, See the back end of the keypad, cartridge slot would have been. So this robot includes no electronics. Uh, what it was, it was a, a project where someone, uh, the previous owner, his name was Chris, he had bought it with the intent of replacing all of the electronics with modern electronics, you know, Ard Arduino, Raspberry Pi, that sort of thing. And I've always wanted to do exactly the same thing. So when I saw this come up on eBay, I snatched it up so that I could build myself um, a robot. Here, let's open up the front here and maybe you can, or maybe it's the back. I don't remember which is the front and which is the back, but the pointy thing that goes through the grommet, I guess you'd call it a stud. This one seems to be kind of stuck. Well, we may have to do a little bit of surgery to get that piece off. Maybe hitting it in there with a heat gun or something would be able to loosen up that other side. For now, let's leave it as is. And I will have to show you the top-down view. So in here, we have a stepper motor. Stepper motor is going to be its direction motor. Here are some wires. This is probably the um, a tachometer on one of the wheels that lets it know whether it's turning. There's a couple sensors here and here that will be, uh, those will be responsible for the limit switches. Yeah, I kind of remember this from back when I had mine. So looking down here, you can kind of see here's the drive motor. Um, here's the things that come down for the limit switch. The limit switch will just come around and touch there and let it know that it's at the end of its turning. So all of this looks looks pretty good to me. And like I say, we've got absolutely no electronics. It's going to be up to me to um, replace this with some modern electronics. It's going to be fun and we're going to do multiple video sequences on this. Okay, it took a little bit of a struggle, but I did get that panel off so you can see inside, kind of see inside the middle of it here. You can see the stepper motor, drive motor. It's got a couple inductors down here in the drive motor. So the seller also ships some other goodies with this. Let's see what's inside. This here I think is a Microsoft um, USB webcam and the idea here with this uh, 3D printed mount is that you could mount this in the front of the robot where the sonar sensor used to be and the robot will have vision. I'm not familiar with this particular webcam but it looks like a reasonable webcam and the seller did a really good job of coming up with this mount. It seems to be seems to be like it'll hold there uh, securely. And what else does he have in here? He also included this package here for the rectangular hole. This would be the hole where the um, motion sensor used to be and he put um, a little two-piece sonar sensor in there as well as a motion sensor there and I'm not sure what this other one is maybe an infrared ranging sensor something like that uh, we'll look that up and figure that out but again a nice job on the 3D mount um, so the replacement sensors we have would be 
the webcam and this sonar motion and possibly infrared distance. I'm not sure I'll have to look that up. So the seller did a really nice job of laying these out here. So I might just use these verbatim, assuming I like the particular sensor choices, or I might come up with something of my own. Time will tell. So one of the things we need to do is verify our assumption about how the stepper motor is connected. So I've got my multimeter position so we can see it and I can come in here and check these wires off the stepper motor. Now there's six wires coming out of it so I would assume it is a six wire stepper which could be wired in either uh, bipolar or unipolar mode. So let's check this black and white pair. We'll assume this is one of the coils. We've got about 37 ohms. The other pair we will assume is also going to be around 37 ohms. Yep, 37. And then we will assume these yellows are the center um, of the coil in the middle of each pair. So if I check one of them, I would bet to get around 18. Yep, 18.6. Um, so what we can do is we can get rid of this yellow wire. Uh, we'll just cap it off. Okay, the first step in getting the robot going is to interface with its various drive systems. It's uh, directional motor, it's drive motor, the limit switches, and the encoder. So I started out by looking at how I would drive the motors. And the first thing I looked at was the Adafruit motor shield for the Arduino. In particular, version 2 of the motor shield that used TB6612 drivers. Now that seemed like a good enough idea to me, so I decided to use TB6612 drivers in my own design. So the TB6612 is a dual H-bridge, so being an H-bridge, it can control a motor in two directions, forward and reverse. And since it's a dual, it could actually control a stepper motor. So a stepper motor has two coils, so you can control either coil forward reverse, you can step them in the right way to make the motor go around. My schematic has two of those drivers here. So the first one I use for the directional stepper. So we have uh, four outputs going to that stepper. M1, A, and B are for the first coil, and M2, A, and B are for the second coil. Then we have a total of four control inputs over here, these M1, I1, I2, and M2, I1, I2, and then a PWM to set the uh, current. So all of those drive control pins go up here to an Atmega328 microcontroller, whereas the various outputs uh, from the H-Bridge go to a connector. I tried to replicate the original Heathkit pin out on the connector. There's also a standby signal that if you drive that low, we'll put the driver into standby and it will not output any power. Now here we can see a jumper on the power going into the H-bridge. That would allow me to select a different voltage if I wanted to. I powered it off of 12 volt. The second uh, TB6612, I also used uh, one of these. This is for the drive motor. We only need to use half of it. So if you look at M3, A, and B, they come out here to this P308, which I tried to reproduce the, the uh, Heathkit pinout for the drive motor. So there's two signals that go to the drive motor, uh, the two wires for the DC, and you run the current through it one direction, he'll go forward, run the current the other direction, he'll go backward. Um, Heathkit actually, I think, used transistor and then a relay to control direction. We can easily do that with an H-bridge. Uh, maybe they didn't have these nice H-bridge uh, ICs back then. The other half of the H-bridge, I ran out here M4, A, and B just to a connector I called spare in case we had another motor we wanted to run. And the same sort of thing with all the digital lines over here connected to the Atmega 328. So that gets us the stepper motor and the drive motor. Now the limit switches, I have them coming into a header and they just go to a couple pins on the microcontroller. I also implemented to sense uh, battery voltage so that we could have a low battery alarm, uh, a resistor divider, and a um, Zener diode here on a battery sense. Uh, this will divide uh, the battery voltage down to a level that can be sensed by the microcontroller, and then the Zener is just there at protection, so we cannot accidentally um, put too much juice into the microcontroller. For the encoder, the encoder uh, is a reflective encoder. It has um, one part of it is an LED, and the LED shines on a rotating metal disc, and then it reflects into a phototransistor. So to drive the LED, we have a 220 ohm resistor. There is a ground, which is common between both the LED and the phototransistor, and then there's an encoder pin that comes out 
with a 100k uh, resistor uh, pull up on it. Uh, this resistor actually does have to be quite large because this um, photo transistor it can't really pull that much down apparently. I originally tried a 10k it didn't work but 100k worked fine. And then that pin goes into the microcontroller. Uh, we've also got a, a header here for programming, an ICSP header to program the microcontroller in circuit. And then we have a connector here, which is where we will connect to our Raspberry Pi. And uh, this connector, it has um, I2C, which is how the Pi will talk to this microcontroller. So we've got our SCL and SDA. Uh, we've got several power lines. I figured let's be able to supply a lot of power to the uh, Raspberry Pi off of this board. So we've got a total of three five volt lines and three grounds for power transmission plus a ground for signal. Now I also added some additional um, pins here that we could use to indicate things to the Pi rather than having to read status over and over with um, I squared C. Um, I figured I would add a moving line that the microcontroller could simply assert whenever the robot is moving. Um, standby for the mic for the uh, stepper drivers, I wired to a pin so the Raspberry Pi could easily shut everything down if there was a safety problem. And I decided to add a fault line, which is something that the microcontroller could assert to the Raspberry Pi if there was some kind of problem and then the Raspberry Pi could come over via the I2C and uh, read the status. So I really didn't like um, the lead acid batteries used in the original robots. If I remember right, they would kind of run down, then everything would kind of run slowly until it finally had the power cut off. I wanted something where we would have constant voltage uh, to the motors and to the logic. So my thought was I would use a lithium ion battery of a little bit higher voltage, let's say the 14.4 volt and then I would uh, regulate that down to a fixed 12 volt. So we'd have a steady 12 volt to run all of this motor electronic. So here we have an LM2576 switching regulator. That's this IC here, um, together with its inductor, um, diode, and its capacitor. So standard uh, switching power supply. I actually have two different packages for the regulator. So we could use an XL4005, or we could use an LM2576. In my robot, I use the LM2576, and I had three different packages for the inductor based on which inductor you put in there. I've also over here got a TVS diode for protection. Um, just in case something went wrong, uh, the TVS diode will catch the power surge. And then we do the same thing with the 5 volt supply. We've got um, battery voltage comes into it and we regulate it down to 5 volts. So I have a couple headers here that allow you to enable or disable the uh, switching regulators. So we should be able to turn them on and off with the low voltage switch. So one thing you might ask is why didn't I use a more conventional stepper driver such as the Polalu little plug-in drivers instead of this uh, TB6612. In retrospect, I do kind of wish I would have done that because a stepper driver like the Polaloos, you could have um, you could have set the current. Usually, they'll have a little potentiometer for setting the current, something like that. This here is fine because the Heathkit motors are 12 volt motors, so we can just run them through a 12 volt uh, driver just fine. But other stepper motors, if you were to use other stepper motors, are often um, not driven at a constant voltage, they're driven at a constant current, and that's where the Polalu drivers would make more sense. So if I respin this board, maybe I will think about switching out one of these um, H bridges for a Polalu stepper little board and, and do that instead. We'll, we'll have to think about that. Here is the completed motor board. So over here is our header where power comes in. We've got the two regulator sections. Here is the 12 volt section with its regulator, its inductor, and its diode. There's the 5 volt section with its regulator, inductor, and diode. Here's the Atmega328 CPU, and down here we have the stepper drivers. One here, and one there. And various headers, which I've tried to have the original Heathkit pin out for those. And over here, a header where it will connect to the Raspberry Pi. Here are the two jumpers to enable uh, the two voltage regulators so I can turn them on and off maybe with a power switch at some point. So here you can see a couple boards mounted to the Hero Junior. I opted for mounting them on the side of the robot. I figure that's the easiest place to work on them uh, because if I had to put them in the head you have to kind of take the sides off to get in there really to get the head loose anyway so why not just put them on the side. 
So we have two boards here. Here we have the power and uh, motor control board, and here we have a Raspberry Pi with a hat that breaks out connections um, that go over to the various boards. Here attached to this little USB cable is a programmer. This is a USB ASP programmer, which goes over and connects to the, the motor board. This is only here for development. Um, as soon as I've got the code finalized, I'll just get rid of this. It's just easier. I can program it right here from the robot um, using that little programmer plugged into the Pi's USB. So we've got various cables that come in down here to the bottom. The drive motor is this cable. The stepper motor is this one. Uh, this cable here is um, for the encoder on the wheel. And then this one here is the limit switches. And then up here we have battery power coming in as well as a pigtail that runs out here to a charging connector so I can plug in a charger. Uh, now you can see down here is where I have installed a battery. This is a lithium um, ion battery that I built myself. I'm actually going to do uh, another video on the battery kit. It was called a Bruzend battery kit um, and I put a bunch of 18650 cells and a battery management system in there together with a fuse and a switch and it comes up here and hooks into the power board. There'll probably be a separate switch for turning the robot on and off, uh, but this is just a switch on battery, makes it easy for development. I can just switch it off right here. And the fuse is good at me um, protecting against any mistakes, um, any screw ups that would cause a short. I've got like a five amp fuse in there is good enough, and whereas the BMS is probably capable of delivering 30 amps. So that is pretty much it for for the uh, motor hookup on this robot, what I will do is I will have another cable will come off of this breakout, uh, maybe from one of these headers over here, run up there, go out and run to the head where I will have another um, Arduino type board up there uh, running the head sensors, the keypad, the ultrasonics, that sort of thing. Okay, I've got the robot sitting on the bench. I wanted to power it on and show what happens with the uh, steering stepper. So when I power it on, it's going to seek the stepper to each side to test the limit switches and then it'll seek back to center. So let me switch on the power. There it goes, seeking one direction. There it hit the limit switch. Now it's seeking all the way to the other side. It's counting the steps as it's going. So now it has counted the steps from one side to another and it's seeking back to the middle position. So there it should be centered and uh, from this point on we know how many steps will turn us left or right and we can drive it. Okay, I have built myself a wireless remote. The remote actually has a Raspberry Pi Zero W in it as well as a lithium ion battery. And it has a little thumbstick so I am ready to actually control the robot. So we can go forward and backwards and left and right. So let me move him forward and backward and let me try turning. Now the steering does turn kind of slowly, but there. And if we turn the steering all the way over to the side, he can actually make quite a steep turn. Oops, that wasn't really that good. You can see it does take getting a little used to the drive system. Let him recenter. So I think this is pretty promising so far. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.